Though it isn't written in a book <laughs> that God is anti-Christ or against his Christ, I use the phrase uh, anti-Savior, that justice is anti-Savior, and um, it has to do with the penal substitute God. When they say man sinned, and God has wrath for sins, and justice demands satisfaction, justice is God, that right there is anti-Christ. Right there. Because what they're talking about is the court's first disposition with regard to man and sin. And the false premise there is, is that God expected man to be righteous. And God holds his own standard above man. Absolute standard of righteousness. And because man is not righteous, God is therefore wroth and angry, wrathful on man. Now, <clears throat> it's not a coincidence that God starts to resemble... The penal substitute God starts to resemble a Pharisee who puts burdens on people too heavy to bear, yet they don't lift a finger themselves. So that's how God is depicted <clears throat> as uh, probably the most unreasonable Pharisee you've ever met. I do mention in the book somewhere uh, where either justice or God is anti-savior, and um, anti-savior is anti-Christ. First of all, uh, the God that is anti-savior or anti-Christ is the God of the false depiction of the penal substitute, uh, Calvinism, Catholicism, you name it. Because if you were to ask your average Christian, do they think that man could save himself without Jesus Christ? That man could be righteous without God and without the aid of God? They would say, no, that's ridiculous. Man cannot deliver himself. Man has need of God to be righteous. Your average believer can see that and say it. It's undeniable. I mean, you see how utter blasphemy it is to say, yeah, man could save himself and have absolute righteousness without God at all. You see how blasphemous that is. So where they keep saying that man sinned, God has wrath for sin, justice demands satisfaction for sin, they are having God place his own absolute righteousness over man. And you see man can't live up to it, so therefore God is wrathful on man. That is very unreasonable. It's unrealistic. Man enslaved to sin. God expects man to be righteous without God and without the Savior. You see, that makes the disposition of the court with regard to man and his sins anti-Savior. Like God is expecting man to be righteous without the Savior. And here you have the absence of any legal distinctions. Where his demands, they do not care what your problems are. They're not even a factor. Like being enslaved to sin. For that which I want to do, I do not do. And the very thing I don't want to do. And God says, I don't want to hear any of those excuses. And he says, you have to be righteous or I have wrath on you. And so you see, this has to do with the basis for which they argue. You see that God then diverted the wrath unto his son. Had wrath on his son. And it pretended it was you people who couldn't deliver yourself when you should have. You see, that's very unreasonable. So the Pharisees, who put burdens on people too heavy to bear, yet they won't lift a finger to help them. God puts an impossible demand on man. And this is man born with a corrupt nature. Man born in ignorance. Oh, man's supposed to figure it all out himself. He's supposed to overcome the flesh himself. I would like to know how he separates from it. The disposition of the penal substitute God and the Catholic God and you name it is that, and yet they'll say the sin barrier. <laughs> the penal substitute God is expecting man to become righteous without the help or aid of God. And also, they have God denying his own righteousness. And the implications are that the court thinks that there is a righteousness out there that exists that has nothing to do with God. You know, and no help from God. And so you see when they have God, like a I mean, he seems like he's a irrational perfectionist who is overly severe, demanding, puts workloads on people that there's no way they can complete the work. And then he's very angry when it isn't done. He's unrealistic. He's a cruel taskmaster. And in fact, it's set up for you to fail. I mean, they'll say Jesus Christ died in every man's place and every man deserved that wrath. Well, you know, you got the baby who lived two months and died. God puts demands on that infant to be righteous. And you see, he can't be. But God doesn't want to hear any of that. The basis from which they argue 
or try to establish it as legally uh, established, that is, for God to have his wrath on man makes God unrealistic, unreal, cruel. God expects man to be righteous all by himself without the aid of God and God refuses to help him on purpose. That's the idea. God refuses to help the man. God knows a man can't do it. God ain't going to help him because he don't want to. This is a false pretense. They have the penal substitute God setting up a false pretense, setting up man to fail, impossible demands. He won't even help him. You see, this is why it reminds you of a Pharisee. And uh, they'll say, sin is sin. And so, if you keep all the law, but break one, one jot of the law or whatever, the whole weight of breaking all the law falls on your head. So therefore, you might as well be Hitler. Run to a stop sign and you're Hitler. The penalty is maximally severe. It can't be made more severe. So, this makes God anti-savior. And it's the same thing with Calvinism. The reprobate. Here the reprobate. They're enslaved to sin. Corrupt nature. They don't have a free will. They're not allowed to even want to be good. They're not even allowed to desire goodness. And God is very angry at them. Because he expected them to be righteous without his son. Because he put this absolute standard over the reprobate. And he's angry because they don't meet it. And so that's what they mean when the Calvinists say that God has wrath on them for their sins. Because he expected them not to. But they won't say that. You see, that's Antichrist. And that's the spirit of the Antichrist there. Well, they have God actually being against his own Christ. Where God is entertaining a righteousness that is apart from God. God invented it, to use the humanism. He is the original. And all righteousness comes from God. So why would he put that over sinful man, enslaved to sin, infants, blanket all over all of humanity, including those with severe Down syndrome, you can name it, the ignorant. And when they don't live up to these impossible demands, he gets very wrathful, in fact, maximally severe. And when you see a man cannot deliver himself, man cannot be righteous. He can't. Everybody knows it, but it's funny. God don't see it. God isn't even as realistic as your average sinner. Now, how do you like that? So that's what I mean by God being anti-savior.